Marx versus Lenin, Stalin, and Mao, or how I learned the difference between the two and defined communism. Greetings all, it is I, the Theosaurus Rex, your friendly neighborhood political scientist. I recently got tagged in a post on Twitter that included friend of the show Jeff Dornick from the Gatekeepers podcast. The discussion centered around the idea of communism in Christianity. A lot of people in the discussion were referring to different things with regards to communism, so I thought it would be helpful to, to differentiate the two. There is a huge difference between the communism of Marx and that of Lenin, Stalin, and Mao. There's also a difference between the governmental structures versus economic structures. I did a video on that with regards to Bernie Sanders and his democratic socialism, which I'll link down in the description. However, here's a crash course on those two theories. But first, a little background. For my bachelor's, I got my degree in political science. I specialized in the formation of the Soviet Union through Khrushchev. Communism was, and still is, extremely fascinating to me, and I felt even back in the early 2000s that communism and socialism would be a much greater threat than any other political system, so I thought I would focus on what it looked like in practice and how it began. Communism as we understand it was written in the book by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels uh, called Communism and Effects, though, and I'll be referring to it simply as the author being Marx for simplicity's sake, um, one of the common misconceptions is that Marx invented Marxism or that the Communist Manifesto is a call to action or a road map about how to establish communism. These assumptions are incorrect. Marx was really more of a scientist writing about a discovery. He was detailing the beliefs of the current communists and how to identify with other communists as well as situations that would ultimately bring about communism. Marx looked at communism as the natural ending of the capitalistic system. Marx was outlining how if the capitalistic system is left alone, the abuses of the bourgeoisie would lead to their end, as a proletariat would realize what happened, and as in the past where Marx clearly outlined how it happened previously, would rise up and shed their chains. In the section called Bourgeoisie and the Proletarians, Marx writes, quote, the weapons which the bourgeoisie felled feudalism to the ground are now being turned against the bourgeoisie itself. But not only has the bourgeoisie formed the weapons that bring death to itself, it has also called into existence the men who are to wield those weapons, the modern working class, the proletarians. End quote. It's important to note he isn't saying what they should do so much as he's saying what is happening and the situation that's made. This is extremely important. He does lay out the situation needed for the bourgeoisie to be felled, however he doesn't call for said felling. Marx didn't think that it would actually happen in his generation, and his brand of communism was a social communism and an economic communism with no sort of authority. Much like an anarcho-communist, Marxism is a view of communism without the need of government because we would have gone through the struggle and united past individualism. Marx listed some things that would need to be done in his roadmap to communism to help the bourgeoisie fall quicker. Some of these being, quote, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax, centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state, and free education for all children in public schools. Marx also saw how Christianity could be used to advance the ideals of communism, from Marx again, quote, nothing is easier than to give Christian asceticism a socialist tinge. Has not Christianity declaimed against private property, against marriage, against the state? Has it not preached in the place of these charity and poverty, celibacy and the mortification of the flesh, mono, a monistic life and mother church? Christian socialism is but the holy water with which the priest consecrates the heart burnings of the aristocrat. It's interesting Marx saw the use of religion in advancing the communist society, even though religion would be done away with in the communist society, quoting again from the Communist Manifesto. But communism abolishes eternal truth. It, abol it abolishes all religion and all morality. 
Instead of constituting them on a new basis, it therefore acts in contradiction to all past historical experience. End quote. And this is because all past really boils down to one thing, quoting again, the exploitation of one part of society by the other, end quote. So that's Marxism. Now I went a little deeper into that because it's important to show how and what some of the conclusions Marx came to as they are the foundations for Lenin and Stalinism. But to recap, Marxism is a utopian anarcho-communist state where there is no need for any sort of governmental authority because we as a society have evolved past the need for it. And most importantly, this is possible because it came about naturally and organically. It should also be note that Marxism is the stated goal of Lenin and Stalinism. Marxism is typically what those on the left or progressive side refer to as communism. Lenin-Stalinism is what those on the right or more conservative side reference as communism. Lenin-Stalinism is differentiated from Marxism via a number of ways. First, because it is dependent on active actions. It is designed to be a means to the end, as opposed to the end or the ideal. Lenin had experienced disappointment at the writings of Marx not coming true. The proletariats had not rallied together, and many of the changes made because of the cries of the proletariats were listened to by the bourgeoisie, and therefore capitalism had actually strengthened. This to Lenin could be explained in two ways. First, since the proletariat were the working class, they spent their time working. They didn't have the time to sp be spreading the good news of Marxism nor was there the proper time to be able to train people. Secondly, there were too many concessions being made that were polluting the purity of Marxism. The people were being placated via bread and circuses. So taking that, um, which he believed to be true, and basing it on the work of Karl Kotsky, who had been taken under the wing of Marx and Engels, he developed and promoted the concept of a vanguard of the party. These people would be full-time revolutionaries solely devoted to bringing about the communist revolution. They would be pure of ideology and represent the proletariat with a single unified voice. However, since they were dedicating their life to this, they would need to be supported by the proletariat. These vanguards would be open to the, would be open to the ideologically pure and would oversee the transition from a more capitalistic system to a socialist one, followed by the communist one. Once the capital, capitalistic system was completely eradicated, there would no longer be a need for the vanguard as everyone would be revolutionaries. However, in every instance of Lenin-Stalinism in practice, the vanguard remains in power after the state is established, thus making it extremely authoritarian in nature. The second thing is that Lenin-Stalinism and this is kind of like a sign of it, is the violence of the revolution. Marx's revolution could be peaceful. Now the communists in the time of Lenin were split into two camps, the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. They were both communists, but the Mensheviks believed that the revolution could be achieved by working within the system. You can remember the differences easy, easily with my awesome remembering tool. The Mensheviks believed in Marx, the Bolsheviks believed in bullets. Every instance of Lenin-Stalinism that has yet to be enacted in the world has led to the murder of citizens and opposing ideologies. Hundreds of millions have died because of it, and I would say it is an evil ideology built on oppression. But if you have left-leaning friends, they aren't thinking of the Lenin-Stalinism, they're thinking about Marxism. And if you're on the other side and you have right-leaning friends, they aren't thinking of Marxism, they're thinking of Lenin-Stalinism. Well, that's it. So, thanks for taking the time, and I'd love to chat with you about this. What are, were you ever aware of the differences? Or had you just used, heard the terms being used interchangeably? Now, I've cross-posted this, so if you're watching this in the YouTube video, you can also hear it on my podcast with the link in the description. Anchor.fm is awesome. And if you're on my podcast, you got to follow me on YouTube. I've added some visual aspects to it, mainly just the quotes, but shh, I won't tell anybody about that. Anyway, thanks for watching slash listening, and follow me on Twitter at the, the or at Saint Theosaurus Rex. 
and let's have a conversation about life, love, politics, spirituality, religion, whatever. I'm open to it. But I would like to hear what your thoughts are on this, and um, there's a good chance I'll probably do a second part to it at some point, getting into a couple of the, the different details. I love being able to like share some of these like nuanced differences and helping people to be able to kind of understand, especially where like other people are coming from. Because I think one of the problems that we run into a lot, and if you've if you've heard me on ADD Masterminds, um, or even the Wax Museum, is that I think we too often assume the worst of people. And so when we have friends like who are going there and they're thinking about communism, and depending on which side you go on, you're thinking of something different. And so you've got people who are over here believe in like let's say well, we say Marxism, who here have their friends talking about how evil it is. And they're over here, and their friends are talking about Lenin-Stalinism, which is an evil ideology, right? Versus Marxism, which, while I don't necessarily agree with, isn't the same as Lenin-Stalinism. Marxism, you can't really bring it about, and it's a natural process that happens organically. And that's totally different, and it doesn't have to be violent. And I think that we think the other person is, is, is just thinking... is going for the worst part of it. Anyway, I might talk about how, because I think there's some really important things, and I might do this on a different podcast or whatever, where I talk about, you know, how you look at what Marx was saying about Christianity being used to advance the ideals of communism, and that's huge. And then you look at some of the things that he mentioned in his thing for like a roadmap of what they would need to happen in like the Western world or a more capitalistic society. And those three of those ten things are like clear stuff that's being pushed by people today. So I think it would be interesting to kind of look at that and explore more. Anyway, um, Twitter, at St. Theosaurus Rex, S-T-T-H-E-O-S-A-U-R-U-S, Rex, R-E-X. And uh, let's chat. Cheers.